As you know, I've complained a lot about my two Macintosh devices. My iMac and my MacBook. Those are the only two devices that I have that run macOS. However, I have one viewer who is very adamant about one particular thing that I could do to solve my issue, SSD upgrades. mentioned it a lot, but I am here to explain that an SSD upgrade is not the only thing that is the issue. So why don't we actually dive into all of the problems that I have with not just my iMac here, because this is definitely one of the biggest ones I've been complaining about, but also my MacBook. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so first I'll start off with my iMac here. This is a 2000, early 2009. So while yeah, the 2009 actually did get the redesign where the black bezel actually extends all the way to the very edge versus this tiny aluminum piece around it. Uh, yeah, this is the early 2009, right before the redesign actually happened. All right, we got a 20 inch early 2009 iMac with a 2.66 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, eight gigs of memory that I upgraded myself because it previously had two. NVIDIA GeForce 9400 graphics with 256 megabytes of VRAM. And the storage is, is it 320? I think it's 320 gigs of storage. I know it's just a tad above 300. So those are the specs in this. And yeah, as of today's standards, whew, that's pretty bad, especially since there's a very slow hard drive in here. Now this one viewer, he is technically not wrong. An SSD definitely would improve the performance aspects. Well, some of the performance aspects that this thing really struggles to deal with, but there are other performance issues that an SSD upgrade alone would not solve. Let's actually talk about the other hardware problems. First of all, the processor, it's good enough for if you're like checking email, scripting, basic, very basic stuff. So it's, it's old, but if you try to do anything a little more intensive, it's still not exactly the best for doing it. I mean, keep in mind, this is an Intel Core 2 Duo. This is before we switched to i3, i7, i5. This is a Core 2 Duo. So that kind of shows its age. And the second problem that I'm not too sure if he's aware of this or not, but if, he, if you're not, well, here's the issue. Graphics. iMacs and MacBooks with NVIDIA graphics from the, around, sometime, I know this ain't happened with this. It's actually the reason why Apple no longer uses NVIDIA for the graphics. The reason why they don't is because of this issue that, well, unfortunately, almost most of these iMacs and MacBooks have suffered from. These graphics that NVIDIA gave Apple, they're pretty problematic and known to fail. And I can definitely tell the graphics on this thing are on their way out. The reason why I can tell this is, well, one, export times, and two, even just general playback of videos. This thing, I don't know what the deal is, but this thing is really struggling to keep frame rates. That's not a hard drive issue. That is a flat out performance spec issue. And which means the graphics is not holding up anymore. <clears throat> the graphics is known to fail in this thing. So I can tell that this thing is wanting to quit on me because well, when you got problematic graphics from this era, yeah, it's not exactly hard to tell. I mean, if you need proof that videos have a hard time playing back here, I'll play back a 1080p 60fps video, which most of my videos are made in. Let's go and actually play back one of my videos. This is a video that I edited on this thing and exported on this thing. So this viewer is not wrong. The reason why it's taking forever to even load is because hard drive is very slow. The thing you're about to see is not hard drive related. It is completely graphics related. Here we go. More freezing. And well, now that 
September event just happened. Let's recap everything and then hear my opinions on it because... There's even a problem with the audio. I think it's a little too quiet for the microphone to pick up. There's a bit of a burble, and I don't think it's the speaker's fault. I really think it's just it trying to play back the video. So, but yeah, I hear a little crack. I hear a few cracks in there, and it's not, it doesn't really sound nice. So that is why whenever I do reaction videos anymore, I don't play it on this. It's because this thing literally cannot handle playing back videos all because the graphics wants to go out on this thing so uh yeah i could upgrade the ssd but that will not solve my frame freezing problem that is all because of the graphics and unfortunately you can't really upgrade the graphics in these things because last i checked apple usually solders the graphics card to the logic board not to mention where am i going to find a replacement so yeah, it's really hard to fix that problem. SSD swap, sure. That'll definitely allow me to load the video faster, but general playback, SSD won't do me any good. Another problem that this thing has is actually related to the CPU and the graphics as well. And it also involves its location. So the thermal architecture starts where it brings in cold air from, there's a couple vents at the, bo <coughs> at the bottom here. And I think there's one from the side here back here yep there's one from the back and it all pours out through the top now technically that's a good thermal design because all the cold air is at the bottom and it's shooting it up so while the thermal design is actually pretty good there is a problem with the location that this iMac is in it's my room my studio is now in an attic which means uh in the summer it's gonna get pretty hot in here and this thing surprisingly still gets pretty hot during exports i don't know if it's the graphics card struggling so much i don't know if it's the cpu doing anything right now it's cool i'm putting my hand up against the vent and she's fairly cool but as soon as i start rendering and exporting temperatures just skyrocket and i don't know if that's because the air in my room is generally warmer it did not have this problem in the basement because i was in a basement the air is cooler down there and I've actually decided to test that and I've brought this down for a couple other exports back down to the basement and sure enough we perform better in the basement than in here. But I really do not want to constantly have to move my desktop machine down to the basement just to export videos. It's a desktop. It's supposed to stay in one place unless we're moving offices, which we are not. So. Carrying about a 25 pound computer, I don't know the exact way, but this thing is heavy. Carrying this down two floors just to export something, that's not really convenient. Even the export times downstairs aren't exactly the best. 1080p 60fps footage that I edit and export at. At first when I got this, a 10 minute video used to take me at least an hour and a half. Now it takes about double that for some reason. Is it some reason the hard drive? or is it the failing graphics card? I bet you it's the failing graphics. To me, it honestly is sad because I invested in upgrading the memory in this thing and a wireless card just so I could use my Bluetooth accessories and AirDrop that works with my iPhone. I even tried using this as my ingest station, but now it, as my footage ingest station because I prefer using AirDrop versus plugging my phone in. I can't even do that anymore. Yeah, I've invested a lot of money into getting the memory and the wireless card upgrade just so I can get this thing to work. But unfortunately, the graphics is going out on me and if I wanna actually fix that, I'm practically replacing the entire logic board. And how much does that cost? That costs a lot. Is it really worth it? And one last thing that I really do not like about this. You may have noticed we're running macOS Catalina. This thing is technically not supposed to run Catalina. The newest thing that this thing can actually run with direct support from Apple is El Capitan. That's a bit old and I'm trying to run the latest versions of things. But because there's no patcher for Big Sur or Monterey, we're stuck on Catalina, so I can't even run the latest version of macOS on this. Which means I can't get updates for and new features for things that would improve my workflow and general performance improvements, as well as security updates. Now, I don't have to worry about security updates because the Wi-Fi does not reach this room, so that means this thing has no internet connectivity. That's why I've been struggling to use this. I, 
I mean, I can't use it for my video editing. I practically, practically can only use it just for scripting or displaying my channel's logo. Yeah, that's annoying. I can't use this thing and I can't solve one of the biggest problems. The lack of an SSD is a problem and, and I do plan on making a video where I do upgrade this to an SSD, but that's really not my only problem. The graphics wants to fail on me. It wants to go out. So that is the problem with the iMac. I can't get GarageBand to run properly because every two seconds it, of recording, it literally crashes. And it'll, it'll even crash during two seconds of playback in GarageBand. This is a problem. I can't do this. So that is why I have not been using this thing other than as a prop or maybe a scripting machine. So an SSD would definitely help me load my stuff faster but it's not gonna help my frame rate problem or my ability to record in GarageBand. It's not gonna help. Okay, so now that I got my spec window up here and because I think my monitor is cut off here, let me actually drag this over here. So what specs do I have in, what are my problems with my MacBook Pro? Cause I mean, this one I actually paid money for. This was a gift. This was a gift from my grandmother. This I actually paid money for. And unfortunately I got scammed in the process because I was supposed to get a retina except this is a unibody. Thank you, Amazon. All right, so what did we actually get here? This is a late 2011 13 inch MacBook Pro with a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core i5. So this has the new Intel naming scheme. Four gigs of memory. I do plan on upgrading it at some point, but considering what I'm trying to save up for, not going to do that just yet. And obviously another hard drive. This is, runs integrated graphics compared to the dedicated GPU that my iMac has. So. Graphics aren't exactly as great because they're integrated, but... And 500 gigs of storage, a 500 gig hard drive. All right, so what are the problems that I have with this? Because I actually paid money for this. First of all, once again, it's not exactly the fastest and he does suggest get an SSD upgrade as well. And once again, yes, it would help me load my stuff faster, but there are other issues that I have that an SSD will not solve. So. First problem I have, I hate this display size. It is way too small. I really do not like 13 inches. I've tried to compromise with it. I did intentionally try to get a 13 inch just to save money. But now that I actually have one, I realize how much I absolutely hate this small of a display on a laptop. Okay, so yeah, display size. Uh, will an SSD upgrade solve that problem? Uh, no. The CPU and the graphics do perform well decently enough. Mm, they do have the performance to give me at least reasonable export times, especially if I bring this down to the basement. I don't mind bringing this down to the basement because it's a laptop. It's not something that's supposed to stay on my desk. But this thing also has another issue that an SSD upgrade Oh, definitely will not solve. In fact, this is a problem that MacBooks have had for years until finally Apple gave us the M1 and this is why I want Apple Silicon in my laptop. I mean, desktop would be nice too, but but despite that, yeah, this, the i5 and the integrated graphics are performing okay for 1080p 60fps footage. This thing right here gets unreasonably hot. So unreasonably hot. I have to get an ice pack to cool this thing down. The basement air is not cold enough to cool this thing down. I have to go get an ice pack from the freezer just so this thing practically doesn't start a house fire. That's how hot this gets. I, I mean, you thought that the 15 inch USB-C Thunderbolt MacBooks that have the touch bar and all that, you thought that those have performance problems, especially when they got Core i9s? MacBooks in general have had this problem for years, and this is a thick boy. This thing is so thick and heavy, you'd expect this to have a decent cooling system. No, it's really just to accommodate the CD drive. This thing gets way too hot. I'm also not a fan that in order to keep this running decently, this thing is running High Sierra. I want to run the latest version of Mac OS. Yeah, this thing is so old. Yeah, you kind of expect it to have to be patched to that. But this thing doesn't even run the latest version either. And I want to run the latest version for the same reasons. Security updates, general performance enhancements, new features that can possibly benefit my workflow. But no, I can't do that. Oh, not to mention, I managed to upgrade this thing to support AirDrop to work with my iPhone and my iPad. Yes, I have an iPad. I barely even use it. I can't do that with this. This thing does have AirDrop, but it only works for older 
Max. It will only communicate with older Max. I cannot get this to communicate with anything newer than whatever version of AirDrop this is. Does not see my iPhone. Does not see my iPad. It does not even see my iMac. Whenever Salt and I have brought our laptops together so we can share footage and both this Mac and his Mac will not see each other. So sure, this thing has AirDrop, but considering nobody else uses a unibody MacBook Pro or an iMac of this design, it's useless. And I wanted to try to upgrade this thing to support the latest version of AirDrop so that way I can get it to communicate with my devices. I can't. There is nothing I can do about it. On this thing, it was just a Wi-Fi card swap that uses mini PCIe. This thing doesn't have PCIe. The module that d handles the wireless and all that is completely proprietary. And the new one that I need to put in this is too big. It will not fit. Also, the connectors are different and I cannot find an adapter. So, uh, yeah, I cannot use this thing with AirDrop. That's why I wanted to try using this as an ingest station and importing over USB or Ethernet since both of these have an Ethernet port. I can't do it. It's not helping my workflow at all. Once again, an SSD upgrade will not solve this problem. Other problems that both of these computers have, I want USB-C because USB-C is the superior port. Uh, let me see what the iMac has. Hmm, we got um, mini display, Ethernet, Firewire, USB, 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 some port, I'm not sure what it is, and headphone jack. Did I say any of those was a USB-C? And what do we have on the side here? Oh, I forgot to mention, this also has a CD drive. All right, what do we have here? Also, we have a CD drive on this Unibody MacBook Pro. Uh, what else do we have? We got MagSafe for power. Uh, we got Ethernet, Firewire, uh, mini display or, oh, I guess this is an original Thunderbolt port. So, original Thunderbolt, uh, USB, USB, SD card slot. Yeah, funny, my MacBook has an SD card slot and my iMac doesn't. And a headphone jack. Did I say USB-C anywhere? Of course I haven't. So I'm not happy about the IO that I'm given with these things as well. So combined with my issues of failing graphics on this, failing graphics, bad heat problems, and a tiny display on this thing, an SSD upgrade will not solve those issues. And these are things that I highly value. Screen real estate. I want to edit on this because it's a bigger screen than this, but I can't. I also value not burning my lap and pos the possibility of setting off house fires because yes, with how hot this thing gets, it can potentially be a fire hazard. And also just not being able to run the latest version of Mac OS. I also view this as a problem. These are things that I value and none of these things are capable of delivering. SSD, well sure, I've complained that these things don't perform very well and SSD will definitely help. SSD will not help me with my computer dropping fr frames in practically everything actually. Animations aren't even that smooth anymore. We can't play back YouTube videos without it dropping frames. I mean, Apple TV is now finally starting to drop frames. And that's just with the internet. Yeah, dropping frames and graphics, tiny screen and super hot computer. This is why I got an issue with these things. And it's not really their fault. They're just old computers. I can breathe some more life into them, but there's also one other thing that neither of these computers allow me to do. Say, what if I want to upgrade to 4K at 60 footage? I do want to do that at some point. But let me tell you this. If this thing can barely handle 1080p at 60, there is no way this thing is going to handle 4K at anything. On the occasion, I get drop frames with this MacBook here, but if I switch that to 4K, I'm going to start getting even more drop frames. I also just remembered that I really do not like the display quality that both of these have. These are not retina displays. This, Both of these came before the retina display, and you notice the difference between retina and non-retina. My vision sucks. I will admit that my vision sucks, but if I can still even count pixels from here, I can still see pixels. If I can still see pixels on both of my displays, then that means the displays suck if someone whose vision sucks can see pixels. That's a problem. So despite that, yeah, I switched to Mac, has my frustration been with the software? No, I switched to Mac because I needed to get away from Windows. And let me tell you, if I ran Windows on these things, oh, it performed like <laughs> I switched because I wanted to use Mac OS and I've had no software frustration issues. 
all of my problems have been hardware hardware related. I can upgrade to SSDs and get things to load a tad faster, but that does not solve dropped frames, terrible thermals, and a tiny display, as well as bad resolutions. So that is why, that is why I'm upgrading my computers all together. I'm basically treating symptoms at this point, but treat the problem, not the symptom. That is how it's supposed to work if you want to solve your problems. And that is just not going to happen because I'm not going to get better displays than this because last I checked, nobody really makes displays for these things. I can't get a better graphics card in this without having to upgrade the logic board and that itself is a very pricey replacement. I can't solve my thermal problems. Even my ice pack melts very quickly with this thing. Like I said, this has the potential to start house fires. There's just too many issues that I have. I know an SSD upgrade would help. I want this to be very clear to you, dear viewer, but that's not going to solve all of my problems and I'm all of my problems that also frustrate me greatly. Okay, so that is enough ranting because at this point, I should have gotten my point across that this one solution, I, I know he wants to help. I'm not trying to make you mad or trying to upset you or make you look like an idiot because Maybe I just have not stated all of the issues that these things have. I've complained about performance with this thing because that's the primary one. The display size is, I mean, it's not exactly the biggest screen out there, but it's better than this, than my MacBook. So I'm at least okay with that. And this was a gift. So I do want to still use this, but with the hard, other hardware problems aside from the hard drive. Yeah, I know it's slow. I agree with you on that. But if this thing is dropping frames because the graphics wants to fail, it's useless. I can't use it. So I'm hoping that I finally addressed my real hardware problems with these things. For the workflow that I am trying to put my computers through, these cannot keep up anymore. I'm frustrated with so many hardware things about these things and a lot of it is just because these are old computers. Old computers can still technically work, but they're not delivering exactly everything that I value. With the announcement of the latest 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro, mini LED, 120 Hertz, awesome displays, and pretty decent IO to be honest, why not just save up money and buy that laptop versus try to breathe more life into both of these products and still have to deal with issues that are very expensive to replace and still will not make me happy. The biggest reason why I haven't done the SSD upgrades yet is because I'm trying to save my money for the new MacBook. I still want to keep these, don't get me wrong. Well, except this thing, th th this unibody MacBook here, it's gotta go. I really do not like this. I did not like this day one when I got this. Well, other than the software, but yeah, other than the software, I wrote, I got scammed on this thing for crying out loud. Amazon scammed me. So instead of just trying to get these things up to snuff, I'd rather just replace them all together. To me, that is a much better way to spend my money. I'm done janky setuping my computers because this thing is already janky setup. It's running as an operating system it shouldn't be. It's running a different wireless card than it should be. I'm done making janky setups. I want something that works and doesn't give me any problems. I really hope this explains why I have not done the SSD upgrade and why I, all, I am constantly telling you that an SSD upgrade will not solve all of my issues. Thank you for watching. Do me a favor and interact with the stuff below. My name is Alpha DeWolf, Random Alpha, signing out.